Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the weekly delve into the bizarre world of Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. One of the most amusing things about Mark is that he doesn't seem to know any limits to his knowledge, whether it be engineering, weapons systems, biology, virology. He seems to know about it all. He is the living embodiment of the Dunning-Kruger effect. And nowhere is this more apparent than when Mark Steele decides to pontificate about the subject of law, a subject of which he is just as ignorant as all of those other topics. But when Mark Steele decides to help one of his close friends with the legal system, unfortunately for young Michael, the consequences are really quite dire, as we're about to learn. This is part three in a series which I've called legal lulls with Britain's least competent legal representative. Uh, but I should warn you, there's not going to be that many lulls. It, it's, it's actually a real tragedy. As we'll see in the next few minutes, Mark's association with Michael has taken him from, from being a, a reasonably content family man to the depths of destitution. Well, he had a deer uh, back at the Durham Crown Course. We had a trail deer today, but with uh, there's a bit of ointment, a uh, bit of flying the ointment, in relation to our plea, which would be Section 3 of the Criminal Justice System, self-defence. And that's due to the fact that there's prima facie evidence that shows that Durham Constabulary or Party 2, a criminal conspiracy to commit mass murder. Let's recap the story so far. About six months ago, when this series was just getting started, I made an episode called legal lulls with Britain's least competent legal representative. And it was all about how Mark Steele was purporting to advise his friend Michael Humble because Michael had been accused of causing some kind of disturbance outside his child's school. Michael was involved in some kind of anti-vax protest that uh, resulted in him showing the, the, the poor children of that school pictures of dead children, which caused a great deal of upset amongst the parents, the children, and the teachers. And as a result, uh, poor Michael found himself the wrong end of the British legal system. He was ordered to turn up to a magistrate's court, which of course he didn't do. And as a result of that, the, the matter got an awful lot more serious. It became pending in front of Durham Crown Court, which is where more serious offences get tried. Things are not going well at all for Michael. And probably one of the reasons for that is his choice of legal advisor. He is choosing to ignore the advice of the, the defenders that might have been appointed to help him out through this difficult time. And instead, he has chosen to listen almost exclusively to Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, Mark Steele. So if you're wondering how much worse can this get for Michael, well, it's going to get a lot worse. A lot, lot worse. Namely, the injection of a biochemical weapon, uh, the, uh, the deployment of a fifth generation uh, weapon system. Michael, unfortunately, uh, publicly was out in the local authority and the police. Obviously, they've taken it upon themselves to arrest him, trumped up charge of um, harassment. Nobody will be surprised to learn that the legal strategy dreamt up by Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist is itself an example of complete batshit insanity. It's one of the most bonkers legal strategies that has ever been uttered in a court or any other place. In fact, the only place a legal strategy this balmy could prevail is in the wholly imaginary court that exists between Mark Steele's left and right ears. In this court, the rules of Mark Steele prevail, not the rules of British jurisprudence. Unfortunately for Mark and Michael, and very fortunately for the rest of us, we don't live in that imaginary universe and the, the legal precedents of whatever the hell it is Mark Steele just thought of do not apply in any British court. But that's not going to stop Mark's 
quite malign influence over young Michael. Mark has Michael convinced that uh, he has a winning strategy. Now, now we've got all the prima facie evidence to say what we're saying is correct. What we've found is the public defenders of us look as if they don't want to run and want to pervert the course of justice and don't want to run the actual evidence. So has Mark Steele convinced Michael to get rid of the public defenders, the, the, the actual qualified lawyers with a background in representing people through the criminal justice system, whose professional expertise might be the, the only thing that could keep Michael Humble out of jail. It does sound like it, doesn't it? But you might wonder, what, why is it that Mark Steele would do a thing like that? Why would Mark Steele substitute his own ignorance for the actual legal expertise of a professional barrister who presumably knows what he or she is doing? And I think the answer is, because Mark Steele wants to make a martyr. Mark doesn't really care whether Michael Humble is convicted or acquitted. In fact, actually, it works out better for Mark if Michael is rotting in jail, because that means he has a martyr for Save Us Now, the ridiculous party, the, the, the fake political party that does nothing but peddle conspiracy theories and raise funds for Mark Steele and his brother Graham. That's what this operation is about. If Michael Humble is convicted, Mark Steele will be able to raise loads of money based on, on what he will claim will be the terrible treatment by Northumbria Police and Durham County Council of this poor veteran. And as you can see, Michael Humble seems to barely understand what is going on. The man can barely string two words together. He, he's not the most literate person. So I think it's fair to say that Michael doesn't really understand just how awful things are about to get for him. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, 2022. Uh, there was a failed investigation by Durham Court Sudbury. Uh, obviously that means that they're not police officers, they can't possibly believe, well, it can't possibly be because they, they've just breached the uh, oath of office. Did you understand a single word that he just said? It, if you actually could pick apart his very thick Geordie accent, you'll have heard that he was just repeating ridiculous conspiracy nonsense that was first spoken by Mark Steele and presumably also his crazy brother Graham. It's as if Michael has become a wholly owned subsidiary of Save Us Now, unfortunately one that will be sacrificed for that borderline criminal organization's greater profit. But it didn't have to end this way. Michael could have just admitted to his crime in the magistrate's court, and as a result, he would have gotten away with a very light sentence, possibly a, a fine or, or just some community service. But now the matter has got so much worse. He's before the Crown Court, which is a court that normally deals with very serious criminal offences, and he doesn't have the benefit of any real kind of legal support. And worse, he's got Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist as his legal representative and advisor. I, I just don't see how any of this can work out well. He's put these lads, uh, Michael Humble, a hero, local hero, right, who's been attacked, been arrested several times, attacked, by the police, stripped off in, in the fabricated evidence that the CPS are trying to bring into his case. I'm going to make a prediction, which is that Michael will be eventually convicted of harassing public officials, and Mark Steele will not lose a wink of sleep over what he's just done to his friend. Mark Steele will walk away from this with his liberty intact, whilst maybe Michael is serving days in prison, and Mark Steele will immediately use this as an opportunity to fundraise for Save Us Now. In fact, Mark Steele, while boasting uh, of how hard he worked to keep Michael out of jail, and, and how evil the cops and the, the courts were for ignoring his ridiculous legal strategy, well, he will start soliciting donations. I'm going to further predict 
that not a single penny of those donations will go to Michael Humble. They will all go to Save Us Now, which is another way of saying that they will all go directly into Mark and Graham's pockets. We're going to fight on and we're going to bring this absolute evil, uh, corrupted local authority, criminals and the police uh, chief constable that one officers have been injected with SV-40, a cancer-causing bioweapon that was developed by the CIA. That's how bad it is. And any idiot who doesn't believe that, we've got all the evidence to prove that that is the case. Right, we'll see you later and tell you how we'll get on. Presumably, the judge was one of the idiots who didn't get that. That would be the only logical conclusion based on what appeared to have happened to Michael since his last court hearing. This is where he's living now, in a field sandwiched between two roads on a piece of land which is currently being squatted by one of Mark Steele's close associates. It's not a nice existence. This is what Michael has been reduced to. He doesn't have any contact with his wife and family. He doesn't get to see his kid anymore. And he's still on the hook for a number of criminal charges in a case which could have been so easily dealt with had he not been associated with the one man who has been the worst possible influence on a man who is very easily influenced. So Michael's been homeless. He's been here for over six months now. He's totally homeless. We've organised, right, all of the relevant authorities know about his plight. They've done absolutely zero. There's loads of these organisations who are supposedly set up, and this shows the actual, the actual lie, the difference between the bullshit that they come out with and the reality of what happens. So having done everything in his power to make Michael homeless, Mark Steele is now blaming the council for Michael's reduced circumstances. Mark has completely failed to realise that everything bad that has happened to Michael is as a result of his own behaviour. If it hadn't been for Mark Steele, Michael would never have been on this ridiculous anti-vax protest. He would never have been harassing the teachers and the students of, of his child's school with the pictures of the dead children. He would never have been arrested. He would have not failed to have shown up to his trial, which would have resulted in the, the matter being escalated to the Crown Court. Absolutely every single bad thing that has happened to Michael has been as a result of Mark Steele's influence. And yet, Michael, like the lamb to the slaughter that he is, still believes that Mark is his saviour. This could be some bizarre, dark comedy but even I'm not laughing at this now. It's, it's actually truly horrible because this shows the extent that Mark will go to, what he will do to have a follower who is prepared to give it all up for his ridiculous cause. Thousands of empty properties around here. Thousands of empty properties, not hard to get them into a property, but no, they want him in this shut, right? They want to put him as much pressure as possible, right, to try and break him because of the words that he's actually been uh, talking about and exposing these, these authorities. Isn't Mark doing a good job of pretending to care about his so-called friend, Michael? Michael is now living in a damp shed in the corner of a muddy field, not far from the Leem estate in Gateshead. It's an uncomfortable place to live without any water or electricity or any of the modern conveniences of a home. It's barely one step up from a tent and it's not a comfortable place for a man to live, especially through the British winter and now the British spring. And it's clear that Mark doesn't really care because if he did care about Michael, Mark would invite Michael to use his spare room, perhaps sleep on a sofa, allow Michael to enjoy the use of hot and cold running water, electricity, and all of the mod cons of normal life. But Mark doesn't care. In fact, it's the opposite. Mark needs Michael to suffer because Mark is going to fundraise based on Michael's suffering. And when Michael ends up going to prison, 
well, all the better for Save Us Now, because that's the way all of these organizations make their money, by creating victims. And in this case, Mark is creating the victim directly himself. It, it, Michael is the perfect victim. Uh, he's got a couple of charges, a couple of court cases that we're currently uh, involved with due to his actions trying to expose criminality by the local authorities against the general population. I mean, the general population just do not know what the real agenda is and unfortunately Michael does is tried his best to do something about that and he ends up homeless this is what you get supposedly serving queen and country Michael's predicament has absolutely nothing to do with serving queen and country nor even king and country in fact if you were to draw some kind of notional dotted line between any head of state that you can imagine and their corresponding sovereign territory well whatever you've just thought of, also has nothing to do with Michael's predicament. In fact, the only reason why he finds himself in a muddy, squatted field, not far from the Lima estate in Gateshead, living in a dirty, squalid shack with no amenities whatsoever, not even water or electricity. Well, the reason is standing right next to him. It's Mark Steele. It's the fact that he chose to follow Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. And, and in my books, that actually makes you worse than being a conspiracy theorist. You're, you're somebody who sacrificed all dignity, everything you have, your wife and your family, to follow Mark Steele. And, and the terrible irony of this situation is that Michael could end his own pain relatively easily. All he'd have to do is just stop following Mark. Just banish him from Michael's life. Accept the advice of the lawyers who are trying to protect him. Apologise to the court for his bad behaviour. Maybe apologise to his wife. Who, who knows? There might be some salvation for that relationship. And even somebody as unfortunate and bedraggled as Michael might be able to win his life back. But is he going to do that? Well, let's hear Michael in his own words. Does he sound like a man who is on the trajectory of bettering himself? To obviously get me get myself sorted, obviously I had to come out of the tent. The tent's only a one-man tent. Um, and like, yeah, I've ended up buying this. Everybody around me's just fell away. Um, Durham County Council's uh, SAFA team. Um, they've just been non-existent since before Christmas. I think it's plain to see that Michael is not going to dig himself out of this situation because the one thing he's not doing is taking any kind of personal responsibility. He's learned to copy his mentor, Mark Steele. And just like Mark Steele likes to blame absolutely everybody but himself for his own failings, well, so does Michael. Michael is blaming the police, the courts, the council for, for the fact that he is now a homeless and destitute man living in a shack in a muddy field. Michael doesn't seem to have recognised that he had choices. It was his choices that put him here. I've had, I've had, I've had enough of our Durham County Council. Like they've, they've, they have prevented me from seeing me son. The Burns man works for the council, which has obviously been, it's been a target. The sad thing about Michael's story is it's one we've heard many times before. The impressionable person falls in with conspiracy theorists and over time his wild theories cause him to disconnect from just about everybody in his life. Family, friends, support services, they all eventually fall away because nobody can deal with that kind of insanity. Nobody except of course other completely insane people. And for insane, manipulative people like Mark Steele, well, it's to his advantage to have Michael as separate as possible from anything else that might offer him the slightest bit of support, the slightest opportunity to better himself, to get him out of that muddy field. Because where Michael is right now, well, he is now a pliant servant, somebody willing, somebody who has already shown himself more than willing to give up everything, even the most cherished thing in Michael's life, 
his own son. Michael gave up his own son to serve Mark Steele as his willing supplicant and idiot. And could there be anything more shameful, despicable than that? Michael, you did it to yourself. Take some responsibility. You can still end this. You can still get out of this bizarre manipulative control. Although, of course, I know you won't. Because I've told you to do it. It's opposite land again. You'll do exactly the opposite of what I've suggested. Get into bed deeper with Mark Steele. See how much further the, the horrible degradations can go. We're waiting now for days, dates now, but the thing is that everybody who's been helping me since I've took Mark's advice, uh, advice, obviously, to, to, to sign on, and I've got the legal aid, obviously, to be able to help help progress what, what we're doing here, because, to be honest, like, just, there is a lot of, a lot of things to, to be done, and you can't do it if you haven't got, the, like I say, if you haven't got the support, if you're just left and... If you haven't got the support, says Michael, you're just left. And, uh, Michael, you don't have the support. You think you're being supported by Mark Steele, but that's not support. It's the opposite of support. You have mistaken an exploitative, abusive relationship for friendship, when it clearly isn't. If Mark was your friend, you'd be sleeping in his spare bedroom or his couch. You'd be, at the very worst, you'd be a tent in his well-manicured back garden. You wouldn't be sleeping in a squalid squat in a disgustingly muddy field. You're there because Mark Steele needs you to be there. You're suffering because Mark Steele needs you to suffer. And you're going to go to jail because Mark Steele needs a martyr. And uh, just as I was making this, in fact, a few minutes before recording this, I've seen the next update that Mark Steele pasted on his uh, ridiculous Telegram channel. And as you might expect, things are not going well for Michael. This is the omni-tragedy. Things are just going to get worse for Michael. And, well, in a strange way, we might be the only people who really give a damn. That's me and you, the people watching this show. Because Mark sure as hell doesn't, and the people pretending to help him don't. But I don't think Michael would... If Michael was in front of us now, would he listen to us? Would he... Would he take our advice? Would, would he sever his relationship with Mark? No, he, he wouldn't. He's, he's now part of Mark Steele's cult. So all we can do is watch and just see a man's life crumble. So why bother documenting this? Why, why bother charting one man's series of degradations at the hands of another? Well, I hope by putting this video out, people will eventually see what happens if you choose to associate yourself with Mark Steele. And the answer is, you will end up like Michael. You will lose everything, your home, your child, and your life. And you'll end up living in a disgusting, squalid shed, in a muddy, squatted field, just outside the Lee Estate in Gateshead. And you know what? Consider yourself lucky, because Jail might be worse. Actually, no. Maybe jail would be better. At least you'd get a meal. I don't know. I have never been to jail. It doesn't sound like a lot of fun. But uh, I promise you, whatever it is I make for the next episode of Mind of Steel, it bloody well better be a bit more fun than this one. Because every time we have a legal lulls episode, the last thing we do is have a laugh. I'll see you in a week. <laughs>